Welcome back dudes with another video on Project Strawberry. Major changes, uh, first big one, is that I'm not using, I'm not using this. This was the older frame, uh, kind of screwed around with the wheels a little bit. But anyway, this was the older frame I used, but now Strawberry got an upgrade. And actually, a couple. First one, the Lego frame uh, for obvious uh, for obvious showing. Uh, try to make it as light as possible, but these motors can actually, or not can, these motors are pretty weak. So it, I tried making it as light as I can, kind of balance out the weight to put a little more pressure on the wheels instead of sticking it out, turning and whatnot. But this is what I could do. She moves very slow, however, but maybe eventually I can invest in the Raspberry Pi Zero and take off a good bit of weight instead of the Balk Pi 3 and then probably get pow more powerful motors, but this is what I have right now and it turned out pretty good. So, the next big change was the coating. So, as you can see on here, this is the new code. So, to start from the top, I'm using rpi.gpio for controlling the Raspberry Pi GPIO pins. And the next one might look a little new because it is. Well, anyway, um, import Pi Game. So, I'm using the Pi Game modules to read the keyboard input. So before I was using curses for that, but like I said in that in the previous video, you can check that out in the description. I wasn't very familiar with the curses libraries actually at all. That's like one of the only times I've ever used it. But anywho, I'm a lot more familiar with Pi Game, so I switched to that. I was using curses just to kind of get something going, just kind of like a prototype at least something I can screw around with and whatnot and so built on from curses moved to Pi Game. Now as you can see here in the beginning import Pi Game. I'm also importing system that's just at the end. Oh there it is. That's <laughs> that's just uh, used for right here because if you just have Pi Game dot quit without system dot exit you keep getting errors when you close the program and whatnot and the system.exit will get rid of them. But it's not necessary to have system.exit because pygame.quit closes everything. But anyway, the pygame.init, you always want to call that after you import pygame because that initializes all the pygame modules. Uh, from pygame.locals import asterisk, that's importing all of the pygame modules. And then the next line, the pygame.display.set mode, that's what's creating the screen. Now, for this, I don't really need a screen, but later on I'm probably going to be making graphical user interfaces, aka GUIs, to just kind of, I don't know, have like cool diagrams and graphs or whatever displaying data about the car like maybe the direction it's going in or oh oh wait actually uh, the next thing I want to do is attach a camera on the strawberry that way I can see what she's seen and Pi Game has a camera module so I can use the webcam the one I'm using right now I can attach that to the front of strawberry which is just going to be a lot more weight that I really don't want but <laughs> I'll do it anyway because it'll be neat. And then I can use Pi Game to look through the camera, and then that would that would be displayed on the window. The Pi Game dot display dot. Oh my God, words I cannot speak. <laughs> the the Pi Game dot display dot set mode would be the window, the images the camera catches display, and then I can use that window to look through the camera. Then moving on as I explained in the previous video what all this stuff is, GPIO dot set warnings false, that's so it won't keep coming up as a warning saying this pin is already being used 
it'll stop displaying that warning. Then the GPIO.set mode, GPIO.board, that reads the board numbers, all this stuff explained in the last video, but basically it uh, reads the numbers on the Pi's pins from 0 to 40 instead of the other identification numbers. Then the GPIO.setup, that's telling what the pins are going to be set up as, output or input. Output, it will give an output voltage when you tell it to. Input, it will accept voltage instead of trying to output voltage and then you don't want to have them set the output and then have something that takes in or then have you don't want the GPIO.setup to be set to output and then have a sensor like say an ultrasonic sensor that has its own output hooked up to a pin that's set to output because then you'll have two opposing voltages that would cancel each other out or if you have one that actually gives a higher voltage which you really don't want for the pies to fry the pins then you really could cause some damage but anyway moving on <laughs> the next the next four lines of code the output setting to false that's just kind of like a security well not necessarily security it's just precautionary measures basically it's just to make sure all the pins are set to output so you don't turn it on or like if you uh, kill the program without resetting the pins they're going to stay on so that's just precautionary measures to make sure the pins are always turned off when the coding starts now the next big part of the code this while true loop so this in Pygame, Pygame if you don't know is libraries used to actually make graphics or games and so in most games you have the main game loop and this is what it would sort of look like but I'm not going to get real in depth with this. There's a whole bunch of friggin' tutorials out there and whatnot on Pygame. So I'm just going to kind of briefly explain how I'm using this to control Strawberry. So the first part, while true, yeah, it's just putting it in, the, in a loop that's going to go on forever. While true, it's always going to be true, so it's always going to keep going until this, these next few lines. This is the event handling. So these two lines uh, for event and pi game dot event dot get what that simply does is it's looking for events anything that can change a game state that would be anything from a keyboard but but oh my god a keyboard button being <laughs> pushed or released uh, mouse motion mouse button clicks uh, things of that sort and then down here you're telling Pygame what event you're looking for, what event type, that's what this does. So if event.type equals Pygame.quit, you click X on the window, then these two will be called the Pygame.quit that will close all the Pygame functions, and then the system.exit, like I said before, that's to close. I don't really know uh, what the point of the system.exit really is for the Pygame module because this Pygame.quit pretty much closes everything down but every time I closed it without the system.exit I well, error kept coming up so add in the system.exit and it gets rid of that error but whatever so anyway the next part this is the other event handlings or the keyboard since I'm using that which the keyboard is an event. The button pressing and release are the events we're looking for. So the first one, if event.type, if the event is equal to a key down, you push a key on the keyboard, <laughs> then here's how to handle it. All these ifs and el or else if statements. I'm having such a hard time speaking. <laughs> Anywho, so the first one, if event dot key that's a key event if the key this basically in English if the key W on the keyboard is being pressed then this is what will happen it will set these pins to well it will set 11 and 16 to false and 13 to 18 to true so be, with W being pressed and the pins being set to this pattern then strawberry will move forward 
And then the next Elsif, if S is being pressed, you probably guessed it, will move her backwards. And then A and D left and right. And then the pins being set to those patterns to move the motors left and right. And then the last one, if event.type equals pygame.keyup, when the key is released, what it'll do is set all the outputs to false. And she'll stop. So that got rid of the last problem in the cursus library where when you push the button the pins were left on even if you let go of the buttons. And that got a bit agitating because every time you, for instance, wanted to stop, then <laughs> you couldn't unless you had to hit another button. And if you wanted to say, like, turn just a little bit, you had to push two buttons one after another really quick. You couldn't just push a key and release and then she'll stop. But with the Pi Game module, that does all of that for us with key down and key up events. So that's the code. Again, if you want to learn more about Pi Game, I'll leave a link in the description to the Pi Game documents. And of course, there's tutorials all over the place about Pi Game and whatnot. So you can look those up if you want to learn more about Pi Game. But I'm using it really in a very basic way to just control the GPIO pins. I'm not actually doing anything special with Pi Game. The only real difference Pi Game has is the window creating and then the uh, event handling, the keyboard events. So, alright, now let's move on to what it looks like when this all works. So, go ahead and close that out. It's just kind of sitting there. So then, I'm pretty sure I already saved everything. Run it. Here's, that's not the screen, that's the shell. Here's the screen that I was talking about. So this is the screen that everything would be, well, I, my voice just gave up on me. <laughs> this would be the screen that everything gets written to. So, scooches. I can use a controller for this, which I might do next time. Well, well, no. The reason I'm not using a controller is because I had to deal with a wire. Now, I can use a wireless controller, but I don't have one, so I'm just using the wireless keyboard because that gets rid of the wire and holding down uh, strawberry, so it's just less weight if I'm using the wireless keyboard. So anyway, when the game, or not the game, when, <laughs> when the code is ran, the pygame.splay.set mode creates this window of 640 by 480 pixels. And then, like I said before, all the pins are set to false. So, this is. So, a uh, problem here is that, like I said before, the motor's being really weak. I have to move the wire out of the way. That way, that's not holding her down. So, we'll just kind of hold her up here to stop moving. And then, so, here, keyboard, your turn on it. Yeah. There we go. And then, so, pushing W. She'll move forward, you let go, she stops. I don't know if she hit that or not, or if that one motor just decided to move faster than the other one. Again, there's a lot of problems going on here and whatnot, motors being really weak and whatever, but yeah, it works, so you can't really complain right now. Uh, she can turn left, very slowly turn, whoa, she flew to the right. Uh, starting to move a little bit now, move backwards, move forward. I swear, I'm not moving her with the wire. Here, I'll show you. See? I'm doing it with the keyboard presses. But, yeah, so that's Strawberry Design 2. So, check all the stuff in the description that I'll have down there. And until next Strawberry Demonstration, see ya!